will discuss, uh, we will take a look at your progress uh, since the end of semester one or FIP one. And then we're also gonna talk about your next step or the next report, which is the progress report three or PR three. And then we can uh, take it from there. So uh, let's talk about the progress first. So who wants to go first? Anyone wants to volunteer to tell me what's been, what have they been doing uh, since the end? Um, most of you have had your FIP one last semester, but then Aaron had his FIP one last year. So uh, believe it or not. And uh, so uh, he should have a lot more progress compared to everybody else. Aaron, wanna go first? Uh, yes, sir, I can go first. I know we discussed your project separately, but just very briefly um, summarize what you have completed so far and what's your plans moving ahead. Okay, so for, for now, sir, the completion for SOLIDWORKS and the CFD analysis is still a bit more uh, readjusting to do. Uh, as for the project basis, I've, I've contacted the company regarding the boxes and uh, as I, we discussed, it was way, way pricey than we expected. So I'm going to DIY the entire system myself with starting with the stackable boxes. Sir. I shared uh, the small. Yeah, I saw boxes. the file that you sent to me earlier, but I haven't read through it because I was still in another meeting. I will look through your uh, small document okay. later on. Or maybe I'll look into it now. Carry on. Okay, so, so I'll use the stackable boxes and I'll modify it. Uh, filling it up uh, with the pipes and everything inside. Uh, DIY it. So uh, for my system, basically, sir, the, the only part uh, left is the pump selection, which uh, the pump for variable speed, there is uh, one pump, uh, there are a few in the market, but there's one which you can adjust up to about six to seven different speeds on the pump itself. So okay. my, my uh, area now that I'm just uh, focusing on is uh, to program the pump as such as uh, to run at different speeds. So that is the challenge I'm facing for now, uh, the programming part of it. I got a friend of mine to help uh, regarding the programming side. Okay. Okay, so- Why is there a challenge? I mean, you mean the challenge is in, you want to figure out the algorithm for the program to control the speed or interaction with the motor or the pump? Interaction with the, with the motor. So I've checked on few areas where they have used the Adenoid chip to control the variable speed of the motor. Yeah, you may have to have some sort of a controller. Yeah. That will, so, uh, then you can control it. You need to first, uh, just like working with any, any sensor, you have to first set it up, like set up the hardware. This is hardware yeah. abstraction now. Set, set up the hardware, uh, then you can then deal with it as if it was any other variable, and then you can uh, provide it values. I think yeah. the motor itself, or the mm -hmm. pump of the motor, must have its own Arduino or whatever controller you're working with library. If you're gonna use Arduino to control the pump, then you look for Arduino library associated with that motor. You know what I mean? Okay. Yes, so sir. that can help you with the programming part, can help you interact with the motor, and then can help you with the coding side of it. Okay, sir. The next That's challenge roughly based on a uh, rough idea of what uh, you're going through. Yeah. So currently, uh, the pump that I checked out, they, they already have a variable speeds uh, in the pump itself built in. So to connect it to uh, Adenoid that, uh, and set it according to the flow rates I would want is the mm. challenge, the first challenge. That's the challenge, yeah? That's the challenge. Yeah. But then again, That's that will be the contribution of your work. Yeah. Okay, so I look forward to see how you're gonna. How much time do you think you'll need to figure this one out? The coding part of things. Yeah. <laughs> you think so, you can make it before PR3? Uh, the coding part of it. Uh, you don't have to worry about the actual coding. I mean the algorithm only. You know the difference between coding and algorithm, right? Oh, yeah, yes. It's just I a general to... plan. I don't mean you finish the whole program. I mean just to have a plan ready for how you're gonna control the, the pump speed and so on and so forth. Yes, for the base plan, I can, I can uh, for the algorithm as well, I can set it up. I think we have roughly around two weeks left or less than two weeks for PR3. Yeah. That should be enough for you to, to figure this one out, yeah? Yeah, yes sir. Okay. Then next, 
the next challenge would be uh, for the biological uh, health of the <laughs> of the of the crabs i need to learn uh, about the filtration system so i spoke to the company in uh, asdac he the charge told me that uh, for currently is under mco so he wouldn't want me to visit it there now maybe after yeah, 18 exactly. Yeah, so after 18 February, I have to take a well, flight there. Well, yes, just... it has already been extended to 3 March. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I maybe I have to get a place where... Uh, anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll look into the situation later on, later on week. We'll look into plan A and plan B to see how it goes. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else? No, I think we have all. So far, estimating time to complete this uh, entire thing, including uh, algorithm and uh, probably get her results, is around four weeks. Uh, my estimation. Okay. So. Today. Uh, then for PR three, can you show some form of results? Not results, at least initial uh, plans for testing. Like okay, yes, um, at the very least, at this point, you have already a, a detailed idea how you're gonna develop your project. Or your system, yes, and then you also have a plan how you're going to test your design. Is that right? Yes, sir. Perfect. Yes, sir. That's the plan. Which means now chapter three can be completed, and then you can initiate or start on chapter four already. Yeah. So and, for uh, the proving part, sir. Means uh, so sorry, sir. Just for the proving part, maybe sure. uh for the PR three, I won't be able to put in the. No, no, no. Don't worry. You see, if you are worried about uh, maybe plan changing later on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Let's say you yeah. put an initial plan for testing, and then later on, as things go on, you realize mm-hmm. that you cannot do these testing plans anymore. You have to change them uh, for something else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If that's is that the thing that worries you right now? Yeah, because well, I can't. Well, don't worry. Even if that happens, you can always just change the chapter four. You see, uh, okay. if you notice in my in my guidelines on. Um, On PR three and PR four and all this stuff, I always say update, 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 update the chapter, update the chapter, right? Yeah. I always say update the chapter. Update means uh, if there is something that you assumed earlier on, and then mm-hmm. it's no longer valid, then you can just change the plan. It's okay as long as you have a plan going. Okay. What do we want to see now? And by the way, everything I say to Alan goes for everyone else, yeah, for all the rest of the clients listening to us, is that what we want to see at this point is that you have a plan. You know what you're doing. You have a An idea in mind on how you're going to test your design, and even if that plan does not pan out in the end or change later on, that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's part of the progress, the part of the research progress. But <laughs> if you go without a plan, if you go in with nothing and you say, uh, uh, "I'm just building. I don't know what I'm going to do next," then that way we have a problem. See what I mean? Okay. Yes, sir. I get it, sir. One yeah. more thing, sir. I can sure. prove that it saves uh, energy. For up to PR three, that means I can have a result that shows that it okay. saves energy. Okay. Here we go. That, that's initial yeah. results. That's even better. Yeah, that's so you result. put some, so you put some initial results, and you can also put or partial results. You can also put some plans for for later testing or something like that. That also once again show us progress, show us that you know what you're doing, and so on and so forth. Okay, sir. Sounds good. Yeah, that's that's good, sir. Okay. So I hope the everybody else is. Uh, the reason why I spoke to Aaron first because he, unlike everybody else in the group, he is still working on an actual project. And uh, he, when he started FYP one, that was as I said earlier. I think it was semester two, nineteen twenty. Is that right? Yeah. Last yes, year, sir. right? Yeah. Yeah. Last. And uh, the original plan was for him to. Uh, and then after that, the calendar year in Newton changed, mm. and then. Uh, That's why that caused the the changes and so on and so forth, and uh, a lot of changes. That's why he could not take it. And then when the uh, interim semester came, and he decided not to take the FYP. Then, like if you noticed, that was in the interim. I think it was Ashraf, the other Ashraf, right? And uh, so that's why he's doing it now. So that's almost one year difference in in FYP. And uh, during the time, I think you did your industrial training. You did your um, Other courses and stuff like that, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. And you had the chance to learn a lot and also do some industrial work, working with companies and all that stuff. So I would yes, love sir. to see all of that and tell us about all of that in your PR three as well as your oral presentation later on. 
Okay. Sure. Sure, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. Okay. The rest of the team, um, who wants to go first? Uh, next, I mean, Helmi, Ashraf, uh, Rai, anybody? Thank you, sir. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Aaron, stay with us. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm staying in line. <laughs> um, anybody else want to go next? I can go, sir. Okay, that's right. Go ahead. Tell um, me about your project. First of all, uh, quick reminder your title. What is it about? Which one? Uh, automated wave maker system for fish tanks. Oh, yeah, the, for the fish tank. Is that right? Yes, yes. Okay. Now go ahead. Tell me about your progress so far. And uh, okay, um, you know, right now, the actual model, or you're doing it virtually? I'm mixing it. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, for the virtual part, um, I'll be doing the uh, for the flex sensor and controlling the resistance to turn on the wave maker. I'll be doing it virtually, okay. and for for collecting the data and results. I'll do, I have the, um, the wave maker have two speeds. So I have four situations to test on the fish, on real fish. Um, uh, one is the, the speeds, one speed. Uh, wait. Okay, the first yeah. one is, um, carry on, carry that, on. that is my, my plan for, for collecting data. So basically, your uh, your project is sort of uh, semi um, virtual, semi original. Um, let's call it hybrid, okay? Um, yeah. So for the method or to implementing the method, you're using the virtual system, is that right? Yes. And then for some data collection and testing of the let's call it the, the proof of concept, you're using the button yeah. or operated uh, wave maker, is that it? Yes. Okay. So that button operated wave maker, it's available to you at home, I'm assuming? Yes, it's a bit, I have it. So uh, I, I hope by now you have already conducted these tests and you already have, have. <laughs> a set of data. Yeah, I think it's uh, after BRT only, I, I st I'll start doing the test. Oh, why not? Because you see, uh, uh, the virtual part of your project and the actual part of your project they are not related. I mean, they, they are related, but then they, they do not, you do not have to wait for the virtual to finish first, then yeah. do the actual. They can, they can happen in parallel. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Okay, I think I so... Can, I, I can study, but the data, um, you won't need the data um, for PR3, right? No, but at the very least, you can mention yeah, the okay. plan. You can mention or you can discuss your plans. Uh, of course, if you have some data, like partial, maybe one round of testing, okay. that's also good. Shows that you have at least some initial or partial data. By the way, yeah. uh, everything I say today is not for my own benefit. It's for the examiner's benefit. The examiners, when they look at your submissions, they won't want to see everything that I'm talking about. Um, I mean, especially later on when we do oral presentation and all of this stuff. So I'm, I'm telling you all of this stuff uh, because this is the point of view of the examiners. Now, returning to your project, uh, aside from, okay, so you have the actual test, which you're going to do using the wave maker, you, the button operated wave maker, is that right? And yes. What about the virtual model? Apart from building it and programming it, what are you going to do with it? Uh, how are you going to show that it is, uh, it satisfies or it fulfills the requirement of the project? Or it contributes to the requirements of the project. Mm, for the um, for the flex sensor, the more it flex, the, the more resistance it makes, right? Okay. Something like that. So, so um, you need to uh, you need to actually um, how do I say this? Like create a procedure for a test, something, something like that. That if I provide mm -hmm. this amount of power or this amount of resistance, then you will assume mm -hmm. we're going to get this a flickering or something like that. Then that flickering will be uh, indicating the speed of the wave or something like that. Yes, you know I mean? something like that. Yeah. So you need to that's, that's uh, something like that. This is the one that you have to write. It's the one you have to detail and clarify in the report, so that when the people read your work, they will accept yeah. the virtual submission and they will say that that is sufficient to to because you see there is a chance that the examiner might look at your virtual work or even the actual work and then simply say this is too easy and oh. not complicated enough or not 
uh, material for FYP Nina. And therefore, oh. might simply uh, not pass you. And this is very real. Plus for everyone else, yeah? Even Aaron, by the way. Uh, if your work is, if your examiner deems your work that is not uh, up to the standard of, if, if basically, if it's just one controller, one sensor, and that's it, one resistor, then I don't, you don't need FYP to do it. I can get my 12-year-old son to come and do it for you. You got know I me? Mean? So uh, you need to do uh, some a system, whether it's virtual or actual, that represents the level of fun here, uh, Mechanical engineering student. You got me? Yes. Uh, now, another challenge for the virtual session, uh, for the virtual um, design, right. is that you need yeah. to have some mechanical components as well. Um, if you just put an LED and resistor and sensor, these are all electronics. Whereas you, you also have motors. You also have uh, different kinds of motors, actually, inside the uh, thinker card. So try to... In, uh, try to uh, in, incorporate those mechanical components as well, because you are, after all, a mechanical engineering student. You got me? Yes. You can put a motor there and you can say that this motor represents the pump or the, the selector. When it rotates 45 degrees, that's already option one. When it rotates, no. uh, or you can even, even make it move in a certain way that mimics the, the wave. The wave. Like, okay. you know, at a certain speed or something like that. Just, so, just to represent the wave maker, right? Yeah, you can, you can, you can you decide it, you, you define it. You can say that when the motor rotates at a certain speed, it will represent a wave of a certain speed or a certain oh. frequency. You know what I mean? Okay. Because we can imagine that this motor is actually inserted inside the tank, and when it moves at a certain speed, it will generate a wave uh, of a certain uh, frequency. You know what I mean? Yes. So then you have to have the motor in, in, in your virtual circuit. And then based mm -hmm. on the sensor value or based on a button selection or whatever, right? I suggest you create uh, different kinds of control, like button controlled, like when you press a button, the motor will turn, or sensor control, based on a sensor okay. value, then the motor will turn in a certain speed. You know what I mean? Yes. And then have, have these two options available you know, at any time. Okay, okay. Sounds good? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's done. Then we can say we are okay with us, right? Uh, now we move on to uh, the next person. Uh, Azrai, before I go, any questions? Do you have any questions about your project? Any challenges, any problems that you uh, have any questions about? I, I don't have any questions, but um, the coding part for it is quite challenging for me. <laughs> I suggest that you use the, you know that in Ticketcard there are ready-made models, uh, ready ready-made projects? Yeah. Do you know how to get to them? I know, yes. Okay, so in this ready-made projects, when you open the project, you click on the program side of things, then you will see samples of the programs. So for example, okay. if your project includes a motor, look for, for, look for an existing project that includes motors as well. And then you can see how they can control these motors. If you have a sensor that performs a certain function, let's say a flickering or something like that, then try and look for an existing project that has that feature and then look inside the program and see. Or you can just Google it. You know, hopefully you'll find uh, plenty of answers online. There are many, many people and many, many students actually who produce that. So plenty of resources online. But if you have something specific, let's say a feature that is specific and you're stuck with it, drop me online. Just ask me. And then um, if I can help, I'll let you know how. If not, I can at least point you to the right direction. So you can see okay. what it is and how is it done. Okay? Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, next. Uh, Ashraf bin Rusli. You're next. Muhammad Ashraf. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. Okay, so for my project. Yeah. Uh, quick update, quick, quick progress. Update, yeah. Okay, for the last. For the FFP one, you said that my project, uh, suppose you suggested that me to do. Uh, could you please project. remind me of your title again, quickly? Oh, uh, I have so many yeah. FYP and FYP one and other projects as well. It's impossible to keep memory of everything. Just quickly, hint. Okay, uh, so, okay, so my project is about real time solar tracking. Oh, yeah, the solar tracking. Uh, You're following my project, uh, is that right? Part of my project, is that right? 
Okay. 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 So uh, the thing is, uh, previously you suggested that for me to do the different simulation for the mechanical part and for the uh, real time monitoring, but uh, as during the same break, I figured out that uh, in the MATLAB, in Simulink MATLAB, I can do both in real time. So I have okay. changed from the TKCAD into MATLAB Simulink. That's fine, Mavi. I never said that you have to use TKCAD. I only said uh, that this is just an option. If you find another option that does the same job, or even better, right? It's fine by me. However, the same uh, comment goes to you that uh, you have to represent a simulation that is uh, well, uh, well worth or worth or can be called FYP work. If the simulation in MATLAB is considered or is deemed to be too simple, uh, then again, the same feedback. You have to make sure that your MATLAB, are you using Simulink? I use Simulink, I use Simulink. So make sure that you use uh, in your Simulink diagram or whatever, right? make sure that it's elaborate. You can basically increase the number of solar panels or at least the units that model the solar panels and so on and so forth to make it at least large in volume. Uh, one of the biggest issues about solar farms is that we want them to be large in size, large in volume. Like we don't want to put five or 10 uh, solar panels. We want to put 100 or, or even more than that. So maybe you can, yeah, no, I'm not saying use 100 in your design. At least do something that reasonably large enough. So that will represent um, uh, a big size solar farm. Uh, yes, 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 I already think about that. Uh, that's why uh, my constant variable in, the, in my project is I use the commercial uh, solar photovoltaic in the simulation. So okay, that's awesome. That. That's great. Uh, and okay. another thing is uh, I have limitation regarding the data because I've searched online. There's uh, some uh, open source only available for the sun position and not the solar radiation, which is uh, for my project. I can only set the simulation to follow the sun position only. And so you cannot follow uh, this on radiation value. Ah, uh, yeah, value. that's my limitation uh, because that's fine. You can I put that limitation data. in your assumptions in the beginning in chapter uh, one. Uh, in chapter one, we remember we have something a section called scope. Is that right? Mm. And we discussed that in before, and we say that in what well, part of part of the issues in the scope is limitations and assumptions. Then you can just simply say it. You just simply do it to a limitation of the software used. Uh, this work mm -hmm. will be focusing only on the solar position or the position of the sun and not focus on solar radiation. Yes, it's going to take some value of your work, but uh, it's fine. When we evaluate your work, we will evaluate it based on this limitation or within the scope of this limitation. You got it? Okay, I got it. What does that mean? Uh, means basically that in the future, we're not going to ask you, hey, why did you not mention anything about radiation? You can. You can easily and confidently say this was already mentioned in the scope in chapter one that this is an issue that we could not follow because of the limitation of the use of software. So that's uh, that's how you use it from now on. Okay. Okay. Clear. So that that's a uh, for me because uh, because the programming and the simulating part, if you want to test real time validation. Not possible, so it will eat me by right if I just set uh, to put make sure the, the uh, when you use Simulink, uh, you produce outputs, right? Like uh, uh, yes. diagrams and all this stuff. Make sure you save those in, uh, uh, in either GIF files or even video files so that they can be used in your slides. In either your, uh, uh, I think in your oral presentation, if you have some of those already and they are animated, I'm not saying about pictures of your diagram, I'm saying animated diagrams from your Simulink. Uh, by the way, I myself used to teach uh, modeling and simulation, specifically on MATLAB and Simulink. So I know that you can produce animated outputs. So if you can produce those, and then you can put them in your slides in your oral presentation, that will be uh, powerful. That will be, that will answer the question. That will actually give it the FYP value. You got me? Uh, yes, uh, I got it because uh, in the Simulink, I can import from the SOLIDWORKS into Simulink to run in Simulink. I'm doing yeah. that right now. No, no, I meant the other way around. Uh, 
you, what you're talking about is input. Like you're taking values from SOLIDWORKS and you analyze it in MATLAB, in, in MATLAB and similar yes. Now, when you analyze uh, it, you, you're going to produce output. Oh, you go ahead, go ahead. Uh, not just import the value, import the cat itself. Yeah, yeah, the model itself. I understand. Uh -huh. you, you, you import the model itself, and then you, you analyze it, process it, test it, and do your work on it. And then at the end, uh, in your Simulink diagram or your Simulink uh, circuit, right, at the end, there's a, a place where you can display the output, display the values of the solar uh, power or the electric current, whatever variables you're looking for. You get know what I mean? And then you can actually display the output variable in a diagram in a display diagram. Now, this diagram can also be animated. We can actually watch the value changes as you, as the cycle changes. You got what I mean? Oh, I get it. You got what I mean? So rather than watching a still picture of your output, we can watch it happening in animation. That makes it even more powerful and more informative. You got what I mean? Okay, got it. So uh, for example, because uh, for example, my output is the solar power, so I must simulate and show the uh, by time uh, by time that the yeah. power is increased and decreased. I mean, in order to make an animation, like let's say let's say for the purpose of presentation, you can set a limited time, let's say uh, five minutes or five seconds, something like that, whatever, and then uh, let it run for about five minutes only, and then you can animate that part alone, just for the purpose of uh, uh, for presentation purpose only. I mean, and this is all a suggestion. If you think uh, that uh, this is not, uh, not needed, then it's fine. Or maybe too okay, difficult to do or something like that. And so. uh, I'll try. Unless, uh, I'll, uh, yeah, you can give it a try. And then um, if you're struggling with it, and again, you can discuss with me later. Let's say after you have done everything and you already can display your output, I can show you oh, how wow. to, uh, to animate it. OK? Uh, OK, sir. Okay. Anything else you want to tell me about, talk to me about? Uh, the thing is about the data. So, because, uh, how to say, uh, how to know that my real time metering is efficient compared to not implementing it? Yeah, so, that's a good yeah, question. I, okay, let's say you develop a system and it's monitoring everything. Yeah, it comes down to your objective. What is your objective here? What's the purpose of building the monitoring system? What are you trying to achieve here? You want to, okay, okay um, so. let me ask you this question. Why are you building the monitoring system? What is it trying to achieve? So for my project, uh, I want to enable the distribution center to know the output of the solar from the solar farm so that they can balance the demand, supply and demand in the grid. So that's basically your objective, is to let them know the value. Is that right? Uh, yes. So basically, in order to know whether your system has been valid or not, is to know whether, is to basically have to demonstrate that your system can show the correct value. And the only way to do this is that in your Simulink diagram, you know what, let me share my screen. I want to show you something. Uh, you can ignore this, this is for my other. Um, can you see my screen? Not yet, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't shown it yet. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Okay. It's basically a blank slide, is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, one is, because I want to draw something on this. So, uh, basically, uh, in your simulink design, right, in your simulink circuit, you usually start with uh, some form of an input somewhere here, is that right? And then you have uh, boxes and stuff like that, right? And a bunch of other things that may be interacting with them, and a bunch of functions, and so on and so forth, is that right? Are you following me? Yes, sir. And in the end, you have the output right here. Output. Okay. And in the output, you can also link with it with something here. We can call it display. 
Yeah. So this could be a diagram or basically just a digital display it shows a number, right? So what do you want to display is or what do you want to demonstrate is that this is by the way here, this is the the here is input. The input value, is that right? Now somewhere along the way, you know that you you okay, let's say that those boxes right here, those guys represent the solar panel. Okay, these three things right here are the solar panel. So um Based on the configuration of the farm and everything else, that you should at least know how much the value of each individual panel, how much is the output of each individual panel, right? And this is panel number two, and this is panel number three, right? And uh, and maybe yes, let's say you have uh, a lot more panels, then you know based on the configuration of the panels and based on your calculations or whatever, that the output should be, for example, should be 100. Okay, let's just assume, right? That's an ugly 100. Let's fix that. Okay, let's just assume that the output should be 100. Okay, and then what do you do then? Um, your calculations, or according to your formula, let's say your formula is here, and another formula is here. According to your calculations, the output should be 100. Okay, so after you put your model, right, and everything, and you display the output, it is actually showing the correct value, 100. You get what I mean? So, are you still following? Um, uh, yes, sir. So, if your uh, if your system is showing the correct value, which is you, which is the one that you predicted based on your calculation, then therefore your model is working, and that's a validation of your work. You know what I mean? You can say that uh, according to the calculations, according to the design configuration of the farm, and according to the calculations on the math, the expected output or the expected value of the power generated by this farm is X, Y, Z. Uh, gigawatt or megawatt or whatever, right? Now, when we put the model inside the system or based on the value that is also shown um, using the simulink or the model, is also the same value. Maybe it can be some sort of error or difference, uh, maybe acceptable error or acceptable difference. But then again, if it's more or less the same value, then you can say that this is successful. This is essentially uh, demonstrate the, the, the project or the model or the simulated model has successfully uh, demonstrated or shown the value of the of the power output of this farm. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, sir, clear. Because uh, during the previous uh, presentation, FIP one, uh, the uh, yeah, the lecturer said that I must find or outsource the real data in order for me to do validation. So. Mm. Okay, well, I think what he meant was trying to find, he, he asked you to try to find, if I remember correctly, uh, try to find an existing farm mm. that contains actual values. Okay. okay. Um, see, uh, here's the problem uh, with everything that I said earlier. Okay, see, you developed this farm yourself, okay, in virtual model. Is that right? Then you did your own calculation according to... Again, your calculations, is that right? Mm. Right? And then after yes. that, your model basically verifies your own calculations. So it's basically it's all your work. Although somewhat valid, but nevertheless, it's not exactly powerful because this is still your work. What Mr. Uh, what IR Fairuz was saying was try to get some real life data coming from a real actual farm. Let's say you went and you looked around and you saw and you found this other farm, okay? This other farm is configured this way, and you have X amount of cells or whatever, and it produces 300 megawatts, for example. Is that right? Let's just mm. assume this is the number, okay? And you take this farm and you try to model it in your system, in your Simulink, okay? And then see that if your model can present, in the end, a number that is closer or similar to 300 again. This is what Fairuz and Mr. Fairuz was saying. They were saying that try to get something that is referencing an actual farm. This way we can verify that your model is predicting or showing correct values. If you show your model without actual reference data, then there's no way for us to verify or to know whether your model is working or not without us having to study the whole thing from A to Z. You know what I mean? You have to look inside your code, you have to look inside your calculations. That will take a long time for us to verify your work. But if you can compare your work or your model versus a real-life farm or, you know, a small farm, something like that, 
then that is easier for us to see. Let's say that, okay, this is the actual data, this is your model, and there is a minimum error between them, okay, accept it, your model is working. You see my point now? Okay, uh, got it, sir. So I think maybe for now, from now until the end of the semester, you have time to find a working farm, uh, an actual working farm, relatively small in size, so then you can try and model it using your system. You get know what I mean? Uh, and hopefully you can present or to deliver or to present the same output uh, as the, the data or the real life data is shown. Sound good? Sounds like a plan? Uh, okay, got it. And and I do. I wait. personally, I personally, I'm fine without the actual data. But then the examiner is the one who asks for it, and he'll uh, be looking for it. So then you you have no choice. Uh, so basically, the data I already found it in the literature review. Basically, so can I just use the data? Okay, every day this day? data representing a solo form. Is that right? Uh, uh, okay, no, this? not really. Some are just prototype, and some. Would be small. Well, I'm trying to say you're representing an actual um, system. Okay. Ah, yes. I just want to show that. Well, that actual system, you need to model it inside your simulator as well, so that it can produce the same results that you are referring to. Okay. You see, um, how else are you going to use real data? How is your real data going to work? The data that you found from the literature review, how are you going to use it in your in your model? Can you uh, can you walk me through the process? Yeah. Okay, so basically in the literature review, some would state the date and the time of the simulation. So from the open source, I can set the date and the place and the coordinate and so on. I can get the sun position and so on from the open source. So oh. if I run my simulink on that date, on that time at the, that coordinate, and I compare with the the one that already in the literature review, can I do that? Yeah, I think that would work, yeah. Okay. That will work, yes, because you have a reference. Once okay. again, you have a reference. You have a, a the literature review is the reference. You can say that according to them, this is the data that they use, and this is this is the setting that they used, and this is the finding that they found. I took their settings and I applied them into my model, and I found the same data. I was able to replicate the results. If your model can replicate the same results, then we're good to go. Mm, okay, say so. okay. Okay. And I suggest you do more than one if you can. Let's say if you do it for just one example, okay, but if you can do it for two or three examples, three different examples uh, you know, of sources, that is even more powerful. Okay? okay. Uh, as an option, I mean, um, suggestion, at least one, more than one. Okay, let's just say more than one uh, source of data. Okay? Okay, please. Say. Anything else? Uh, no, uh, that's all. Okay. Okay, so let's now move on to the next person. Uh, if Irfan is here, he would know the slides because he's in my class as well. Uh, oh, he's with us now. Okay, welcome, welcome back, Irfan. Uh, but uh, I think I'm going to talk to Helmi first. Uh, who's the next person? Helmi, right? We, we spoke to... Uh, Ashraf and Azrahi and Aaron. Next is Helmi. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, what's your title again? Just briefly the, remind me. The title for, for my project uh, An Alternative Alarm System to Detect the Genesizing Water Currents and Tides. So, oh, the uh, water current so, and tides. Uh, yes. Is it uh, for, not for river, right? It's just for the ocean, right? Or for the, near the ocean, is that right? Uh, not specific uh, to, to, to recognize a flood or the occurrence of a flood, is that right? Yes, yes. Okay. Are you going to do it virtual or are you going to do uh, actual? So basically, uh, uh, I, I find it difficult to to get the data from the from the, from the system that I built uh, from the presentation FOP1 uh, last year. Because uh, I'm using ultras uh, in, in TKK, I can only use ultrasonic sensor. Therefore, okay. uh, I I plan to uh to try to build the actual uh system by 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 getting the Arduino Arduino itself uh with the with using water 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 flow sensor and water level sensor in order for me to get uh. What's a, at least what is the water level sensor? 
water level tu to to detect the the level of water uh, when I know I built one. Uh, but I was, I was surprised that there is actually a sensor called water level sensor because water levels. I myself built a project on water management and water flood management, and we specifically used the ultrasonic sensor to check the level of the water. I can give you my paper if you want. It's already published. Uh, on that, oh. and we show exactly how we use the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, what uh, kind of I think so. Uh, yeah, right here. Are you watching my screen, right? You're still watching my screen, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. So this paper, you can just Google it and you can find it. You can download the whole PDF. It's available open source or open uh, um, code. And in the very first picture, you will see the design of our water sensor right here. And I can, I'm sure you can recognize the sensor, right? Um, yes, yes. Uh, if you don't believe me, that's my name right here, first author. And uh, the sensor essentially is an ultrasonic sensor that is pointing downwards, and the rest of the map is shown here. You can read the paper if you want for more details about it. And here's the second diagram, the whole thing virtual, by the way. And I mean, the, in order for us to show this picture, we had to use fixed card, but it's more or less the same design. Uh, uh, but we use Raspberry Pi, not Arduino. Sensor, uh, we use the motor driver, and then we use, uh, I think for this example, we use one motor because we're controlling the gate. Yeah, the water gate. Yeah, the motor is right here. And this is our first model. And this is our first model right here. This was, by the way, a capstone project. This right here, you're looking at the capstone project, this, this particular one. And this particular capstone project won the best project award, actually the third, not the best, the third best project award. The first and second were also mine, <laughs> my other two students. But uh, this particular one was a capstone project. This is the second model, a little bit bigger. No, sorry, this is the same one. Uh, this is the second one with actual water. This one is just a demo or just a proof of concept without water, just a gate opening, you see this thing going up and down. But this one with actual water and actual water control, and again, controlling the water height and all that stuff. And this is the real model, we will put it in UPM. It's available, you can go and see it for yourself if you want. Uh, with a real motor and the real, con this is the motor drive, controllers and all the stuff. And uh, all three models implement the same idea you see here. Ultrasonic, pointing downwards, and then measuring water. But if you want to use a different sensor, that's fine by me. I mean, it's fine. Or if you want to uh, apply a different principle. And by the way, you can look at the code, uh, the rest of the program, and all the stuff. Uh, but we have IoT elements here. Maybe it's not important for you if you want to include IoT. But uh, yeah, the paper itself is available. Just uh, Google Water Sami Hajjaj and you'll find it. Okay? and. Uh, so my point is, um, using, using ultrasonic is doable or possible, but if you want to use a different sensor, uh, let's say you prefer to use a different sensor, it's fine by me, but then you have to discuss in your report as to why, why you have to change to a different sensor. Oh, okay. oh, so, yeah. so I, I, I plan to use two sensors, water and water level, so uh, water, water flow, we can detect, uh, is if someone is swimming uh, in the certain area, if the water water suddenly increased, we can notify them through the alarm system. So that's why I I, I try to incorporate. How are you going to use what sensor is going to know whether people are swimming or not? What what's it? Uh, not clear. Uh, what is the sensor you go to use or to detect if people are swimming in the area or not? Oh, the detection for. So uh, I will try to add another more. Uh, maybe a thousand sensor to detect the motions of the people around there. Uh, that will they will uh try to detect the. I, you know, I keep hearing the word "I will, I will, I will." It means you are still planning. You are still thinking. Uh, uh, at this stage of your project, it's no longer planning. It's now doing. If you are still planning and thinking about plans and ideas, that means you haven't yet figured out your impact your methodology, uh, which is kind of alarming to me. Um, the sensors that you're talking about are general sensors. I mean, you're saying a water level sensor, but you didn't explain how. And then I ask you, um, uh, monitor if someone's swimming in the area, you said, said uh, sensor, and you didn't know how to explain how or which technology you're going to use. I think a camera would be easier. 
And then again, uh, the point here is that it appears that you have not yet developed or advanced in your project yet. You are still in the point of planning and thinking and you know deciding yet. You haven't yet. Uh, at this stage, you should be building or you know finalizing the algorithm. You got know I me? Mean? Help me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I hope from now until PR three comes along that I see more progress. With, um, uh, more more specifics. This is the this is the key word that I want everyone to pay attention to. We don't want to hear things like uh, I'm thinking about, I'm planning to do, I, I will do this later on. We don't want to hear this stuff. We are now at the stage of finishing, not thinking. You should be saying things like uh, I'm finalizing my code, I'm getting initial results, I'm uh, I'm finalizing which which sensor I'm going to use. Uh, I'm finalizing, uh, you know, uh, I'm already having uh, some components. I have some uh, model here and there ready. These are the things we want to hear. If you're still thinking about something or deciding about something that you are still in uh, PR2 level, not PR3 level. You are still doing progress report two. Are you following me, Henry? Yes, sir. So your name has been flagged. I'm going to take a look, closer look at your PR3. Hopefully from now until PR3, uh, we can see more progress, more specific progress on your work. If you have any questions on your FIP, help me and anybody else for that matter, right? Um, some specifics, like how to do this or how to do that. By all means, you can ask me. Uh, if I can help you directly, I will. If not, I will uh, point you to the right place where you can find the answer. Okay, help me? Yes, sir. Anything else you want to tell me or any questions you have? Uh, so far, no, that's all. Okay, so your idea is that uh, to, to, to create a warning system to warn people who are swimming in the sea that there might be a, like a big wave or a tsunami coming in. Is that right? Uh, yes. So your ultrasonic sensor idea definitely will work. You need a long range sensor that look for. I think your best shot here is a camera. Or maybe if you want, uh, yeah, a camera or something like that, that would look forward and see if the water level changes, like in the horizon or something like that, then uh, try to figure out. And then once that is, has been, excuse me, once that has been detected, then it's just a matter of a uh, quick if statement. If a uh, sensor, <laughs> excuse me, if, if the sensor has been triggered, then sign the alarm or sign, you know, shout the alarm or something like that. Uh, whether or not there are people swimming in the area is irrelevant. Just sound the alarm anyway, and then people will hear it regardless if they are swimming or they are on the shore. I think the part, the part about detecting people swimming in the shore that should be, uh, can be ignored. You get know I me? Mean? Uh, so you can focus on detecting the, the tsunami or the waves and so on and so forth. That's your challenge. But, the, but then again, we are now talking, we are still talking about ideas and how to. That stuff that should have been completed uh, back in semester one. So that's why I'm worried about this project. Okay, moving on. Uh, Erfan, you're the last person. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, since I'm doing that. Can you speak up? Because I can't hear you. Hello, sir. Yeah, now better. Okay, uh, since okay because you were not with us earlier, I, uh, we started by going through student by student, and I want you to give me a quick update about your project. And more specifically, your progress. What happened since the end of last semester until today, and what's your plans uh, moving forward for this semester? Uh, first of all, what's your title again? Uh, my title is the IoT parcel box. So IoT what? Uh, parcel box or mailbox. Oh yeah, okay. That will detect a message as, as the parcel uh, has been delivered or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so carry on. So currently, I've. Uh, uh, assembled the circuits and did. Are you uh, working on an actual school. or virtual? A uh, virtual circuit. Okay. From Tinkercad for each component, I'm using a IR sensor, a button, and a uh, motor. Why are you using an infrared sensor? Uh, to detect if the parcel is actually inside. No, no, the, uh, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, why using infrared? Why not uh, other sensors? Uh, is there any particular reason? Because the infrared, this is why I'm asking about the infrared, because it's very limited range. 
then for it. You know I mean, because uh, I anticipate it's within. Hmm. Okay, uh, maybe you. That was the first sensor you saw. Uh, yeah. One of the things you have to do in your project is evaluate options. So I want you uh, to other options like maybe ultrasonic, maybe other sensors, mm. and see uh, pros and cons for each. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Carry on. Uh, uh, what I need to do after this is to actually consolidate all. So right now I'm building the circuit for each component. To test if the functions are. You said just now you have a motor, is that right? Yeah. Hold on, yeah. That's right. Uh, hold on. Okay, Irfan, carry on. Uh, now I was asking a question: Is why do you have a motor in your system? Uh, the motor is to uh, simulate the locking me mechanism. You mean it's going to open the mailbox? Yeah, uh, no, I mean like it's the lock. So when it closes, uh, when the door is shut and the, the, the puzzle box is detect that the box itself has been closed, I mean the door itself has been closed, it'll auto-lock. Okay, hold auto -lock. on, yeah, front, sorry. Hold on. Okay, hold on, My connection. Closer. Uh, yeah, sorry, Alfan. I had a call. Uh, so we were saying, um, I believe that your your system can be developed into an actual project. Actual meaning okay. that you really can need an, uh, an actual Arduino. Because it's quite, to be honest with you, it's quite simple. You have an Arduino board, one sensor, a couple of sensors, and a motor actuator. If you can develop this uh, into an actual model, I'm sorry, if you don't de develop this into an actual model, uh, I just worry that the examiner might argue that this is too simple. Okay. So you have two choices. You can try to make it a little bit more complicated. That's why, I, that's, that's part of the reason why I ask about the infrared. Because the infrared was the easiest sensor of all. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's why if you use a, maybe a different sensors or multiple sensors, perhaps yeah. LED lights to, you know, give some, you know, maybe detect the arrival of the delivery guy. And then mm. if the delivery guy see a green light, means come into the front yard, something like that. I like make it more elaborate. You know what I mean? Okay. And then, uh, you know, maybe a pre-programmed pre or a pre-recorded welcoming and goodbye message. Like, thank you, Mr. Delivery, uh, please leave the box here, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, an ability to take a picture of the, the delivery in process for record keeping. I mean, the more elaborate you make it, the more, uh, how do I say this, uh, respectable it's going to get. If it's just one sensor and one motor and one actuator, then uh, anyone going to Tikitra can find that project readily, very, readily available on Tikitra. Okay? Okay. Once again, this comment is not uh, me saying it, it's, it's what the examiner might say. And I know this examiner very well, and I have failed. And you've already met him, right, uh, during your yes, class yes. one right? So he might be, uh, he will be more, uh, how do I say this, uh, more um, particular in the, in for oral presentation too. Okay. Because... You see, when we, when we uh, watch your presentations and oral presentation one, we know that at the end of semester one, you're still learning, you're still basic, still, well, still following your track. But the, at the end of semester two, you should be have already completed the whole thing. So you should actually have significant output in the end. You know what I mean? Uh, by significant, I mean FRP worthy, not uh, some basic stuff that you do on day one when you learn the tutorial. You know what I mean? I understand. So, idea good, uh, virtual is fine, as long as you make it elaborate enough, so that it would uh, uh, basically be convincing enough when you, when, you, when you show it to the others, to, to the examiner. Okay. Uh, right? So, in terms of data, uh, that's the part where I'm kind of fuzzy about 
what kind of data can I present for this type of project where I'm actually building a product? Especially once of, that is actually. What data are you talking about? Uh, because from my FYP2 briefing, it's, they say that since it's a final year project, there has to be some sort of tangible data that I must collect and show uh, inside I my think, thesis. Right? Okay, so once again, I can ask you this question. What is the purpose of, 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 uh, of this design that you're building right now? You're building an automated system or an IoT mailbox system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why? What was your problem statement? Mm, so that uh, to avoid people, to avoid. I remember uh, it was about to avoid missing the delivery or something like that. Yeah. That nobody yeah. is at home, you will miss the delivery. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's say let's say right. We missed the delivery today. Uh, I'm not in my house, and uh, the delivery guy came, and he tried to deliver the parcel, but I'm not there. And he left, and he didn't deliver the parcel. What happened? Mm, I have to go pick it up at the uh, post. So that post effort office. that you have to do in order to go and pick up the parcel yourself, isn't that a loss? Mm -hmm. You lost, right? What did you lose? Uh, time. Time. And let's call that time man hour. You spend mm -hmm. amount of time. And also, you have, to, you have to pay real money, by the way, because you have to pay for fuel, mm -hmm. you have to queue at the post office, and so on and so forth. All of that time and effort would have been avoided if you had the IoT system to receive the parcel. Mm -hmm. So, right? Mm -hmm. So, your mm -hmm. system actually saves man hours. It saves mm -hmm. even man hours can be translated. You can say that in one hour, I can pay the delivery guy maybe 20 ringgit. So, if I, ha if I wasted three or four hours just to go and get the parcel, I, I almost lost 100 ring in man hours. Mm. Here's the data that we are talking about. You can say that the IoT system uh, can prevent in losses. And that is one delivery for one person. Mm. Multiply now by the population. Let's just assume that in the neighborhood, we have 100 people. And on average, let's say 10% yeah, only 10% of the people, that is 10 people, yeah, they, did, they were not at home, they were at work and they've all missed their deliveries. And if one person wastes four hours, of, four man hours of delivery, or you know, two, three parcels, multiply that number by the, by the population in Malaysia, for example, or in KL, or even in your neighborhood only, that number becomes much bigger now, right? The collective amount of man hours now becomes, uh, let's say four hours per person, multiplied by 100 people, for example, right? That's 400 man hours. And if you rate one man hour for 20 ringgit, you can do the math now and figure out how much in total we all lost. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? So you can imagine now that uh, this is now the data. This is your parameters. You, mm -hmm. you will have to show that by having your system readily made, the percentage of missed deliveries or you know the last deliveries like that is reduced, mm -hmm. maybe eliminated. And that's just one issue of delivery. Uh, we can also say, uh, your um, your system can also uh, provide some form of evidence that the delivery has indeed been delivered. Mm -hmm. I have personally been in a situation where the delivery guy calls me and says, or the company calls me and says, uh, your parcel has already been delivered, but they haven't delivered it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can tell them, hey, where is the item? You didn't deliver it. They said, no, we did. So it's mm -hmm. he said, he said kind of situation, no evidence. Okay. They said, we just left it outside your house and you didn't collect it. That's not, that's not an answer, right? Mm -hmm. So that's again another loss. You can translate that situation into another uh, form of monetary loss. You can say the um, again lost man hours in in doing the dispute, in uh, cost of rebuying the item or reordering the item, and um, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Even if you yourself, let's say you the person uh, receiving delivery, you don't have to pay for the delivery. Let's say. If the guy comes to you and he finds that you're not home, it's okay. He will come again tomorrow. Okay? Mm. But that come again tomorrow is also not for free. The company, the delivery company, will have to send the guy again to my house. That is waste of time and waste of resources and waste of money on part of them, on their part, on the company itself. You know what I mean? So we can tell the company, the delivery company, 
instead of going back and forth several times, or instead of wasting uh, phone bills, calling the guy and checking where he is and all the stuff, just use the IoT delivery one. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? So it benefits everybody. So you can translate the benefits of this system in terms of man hours saved and in terms of, uh, and which again can be translated into money or monetary saving. And this applies to any IoT system, by the way. And, and, and on average, every IoT system results in improved man hours or improved, uh, because in general, IoT results in, in, in streamlining operations and improved uh, operations. Okay? Okay. So that's the data that, uh, that uh, Mr. Fires was talking about. That we need to show actual, I mean, we don't want you just to build a system and then, hey, we build it, yeah, congratulations. No, who cares? We all know how to build it. Once again, an Arduino, with no offense here, an, an Arduino system with sensors and motors, that's not really, not really a magical thing to do, okay? Uh, you can watch YouTube for a few hours and build it. But then the real benefit is what does this system do for us? What will it do for us? And this is where you have to demonstrate. You get me? Mm, understood. So you can say that after you develop, you can, you can after you develop your system, you can run some simulated, um, some simulated uh, results. And let me show you one other paper of mine. I'm not showing you off my paper, because this paper shows the man hour savings. Sure. Uh, okay, now let's. Um, Portable. Yeah, portable one. Uh, this is my second paper uh, on IoT agriculture. And one of the issues that we, uh, that we talked about, uh, this is not open source. I'll send you the video. I think it's sorry. Um, no. uh, this is not okay. open access. I'll, uh, Okay, maybe I'll send you the PDF later on for myself. Um, Thank you, sir. In this paper, it's about sensors, and one of the things that we were uh, IoT agriculture sensors. Yeah, one of the things that we, uh, we were analyzing is how those agriculture sensors reduced man hours, and then you can uh, check out those analysis and model that stuff. Let me, uh, I'll get the paper from my own uh, control here. Yeah. Uh, PDF. Hold on, I'm, op I'm opening the paper. Wow, two o'clock already. Uh, this meeting is only until three, right? Or before three, right? Mm, yeah, before three. Uh, we're not going to go to three, but I think after this, we, I'm just going to talk a little bit about IR, PR3, and then we can end the meeting. Uh, so this is the paper, yeah. Uh, send you the PDF later on. So, uh, I just want to focus on the analysis. Once again, this is Arduino, by the way, and this is a couple of sensors. Mm -hmm. You might, uh, this is a uh, node MCO, I think. But, uh, this is the Wi-Fi module, yeah. And this mm -hmm. is temperature sensor or something like that. But uh, the point of the, the thing I want to show you is later on in the analysis. Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah, so this is, you see, the, in the, we can say that the, one of the analysis that we were doing here is about the amount of time saves us into thinking of it. Right? So this is uh, one of the diagrams that we were saying. So the time the, it takes and, and so on and so forth. Let me check. Yeah, so in this, uh, in this analysis, we were taking a look at uh, how much time actually this saved us. You know what? Maybe not this one. Hold on. Let me check another one. IoT over here. Oh, this is the same paper that I showed earlier, the one on the internet, uh, the Watts paper. But I want to jump to the end here. Um, uh, in the end, I think, no, it's not here either. I forgot where I put the, the part about time uh, management or time, uh, man hours savings. Uh, I think I think it's here as well. Yeah, I think this is also here. Go ahead and read the paper and you will see that, uh, especially this, this is the first paper that I showed earlier. Uh, not, 
I'm going to show this one. The one I showed earlier about uh, water. Back up here. Oh, sorry, what's this one? Just type water and hydrology. But anyway, um, this paper right here, at the end, right, towards the end of it, you will see that um, we were analyzing uh, the data update rate and how much time it takes for the data to arrive to us. And we were translating the amount of time or the amount of time saved from using IoT. That amount of time can then be translated into man hours and stuff like that. Okay, so you can do something similar. You can also take a look at this paper and see how you can analyze the performance of an IoT system. I mean, whether it's this one or even the, the other one, the PDF one. The, this is the water paper, and this is the agriculture paper. They both published last year. So uh, you can also, these are both uh, IoT systems. Can, this one is Arduino based, the other one here is Raspberry Pi based. But uh, you can actually see how, the, and also involve mechanical design because we designed the compartment and all that. So uh, yeah, I can you can take a look at both of these papers if you want to help you out. I mean, I'll, I'll do PDF in our teams on the news. Uh, what is this? Yeah, right here. Let me open up the chat. I'm not sure if you can put documents here. Ah, it works. Yeah, it works. So. Uh, you can find the PDF in our chat area here. And uh, this is the, paper, the second paper, which is the agriculture paper. Is that right? And then hopefully this can help. And this for, for anyone doing IoT, huh? this can help you out. And if you want the IoT water paper as well, I will, I'll put it here as well. So here we go. This is the other one, which is IoT uh, water paper. So even though that other one is available full online, but it doesn't matter. It's much easier here. Okay, uh, so um, coming back to you, Alfon. So I hope that answers your question about the data. Yes, it did. Yeah. Any other questions you have? Mm, right now, no, sir. Okay. I think um, so far, progress-wise, everybody is almost everybody is doing great. Uh, I'm happy with the progress. A uh, couple of question marks here and there from from some of the guys. Uh, I hope. Uh, that you guys can, can pick up your, your work and your progress so that in time for PR3, you will have something significant to show in the end. Uh, PR3 is on 1st March, is that right? Or early March, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's talk about PR3. Um, I already uh, discussed in the Telegram group the guidelines on what you're supposed to include or what you're supposed to have. Excuse me. You know, just now at lunch, I had durian. So durian is not really that easy. To <laughs> anyway, so uh, PR3, we are, uh, what is it? Yeah, right here. So remember the part when I said about updating the chapters? So let's say you realize that there is some form of an assumption or that you have to change. Uh, maybe uh, you want to go back and update your uh, score or your plans or something like that. You can always go back and change your chapter one. Uh, let's say you found new literature, you find new reviews, you want to update your literature review, I always go ahead. Then when I say complete chapter three, it simply means that at this point you have the method ready and it's just a matter of implementation. It's just a matter of buying the hardware or building the simulation and you're good to go. You are not yet thinking or you're no longer thinking about the idea or which one you're going to go for. That process has already been or should have already been done by now. So hopefully for the next two weeks, whoever still haven't finished their uh, uh, the methodology, finish it soon. And then we should have a plan for chapter four, which is how you can conduct your tests. How do you want to evaluate your project? And if you have some initial results, you can say so more than uh, welcome to do so. Any question about PR3? No questions. Okay. Um, well, since so we are going to tell, go ahead. 
Uh, sorry, sir. One question, sir. For PR3, uh, yes. do they have the unit in, sir? Because uh, some of the literature review have to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, review question. Uh, for PR3, do, do, do we have unit in? Turn it in. Ah, turn it in. Uh, yes, but not for PR3. It will be for the thesis at the end of the semester. By the way, thank you for bringing this up. Uh, I will put a note on that in the group. Uh, at the end of the semester, part of the evaluation of your thesis is session management. And I don't remember the actual percentage allowed. Is it 20%? I don't remember. The uh, minimum. Uh, is it 20 or 30? 30. 30, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you have to ensure that your thesis or your, your final thesis, yeah, not your. your uh, your PR3 is below 30%, and each individual item is less than 5%. But uh, wait, that last condition maybe that does not apply to you, it's only for masters. Um, now, if you already have access to terms, and it's a good practice to ensure that even your PR3 is also uh, less, uh, or also less than, most of the time is the literature review chapter that causes the similarity, because you're taking content from other papers or from other reports. You know what I mean? So make it a good habit that you would paraphrase the sentences. You don't just copy paste. You re reorganize the sentence, rewrite it in your own words, and stuff like that. So this way, you're, uh, you don't have to struggle in here. If you don't do that, and you wait until the last part of the semester, and you check your similarity, and you find it to be 50 or something like that, then you have to go all the way back and rewrite or redo complete chapters from the beginning. So once again, it's a good idea that from now, when you take content from others, you don't copy paste it directly into your report. You paraphrase it, change the sentence altogether so that the similarity will always be lower. So later on in the future, you don't have to redo your work. Does that answer your question, Aaron? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the short answer is no turn it in yet, but we will have turn it in in the thesis. It's a good idea to plan from now, okay? Okay, okay sir. Uh, any other questions? About PR3. Okay, so I, don't, I, I want to talk about the next item, which is the oral presentation. Uh, the oral presentation will happen, um, I think is in week 12. Oh, last time we talked about this. Uh, when is the oral presentation? Is in... Uh, in early May, is that right? Yes, sir, early May. I think uh, maybe the first week of May, something like that, which is going to be towards the end of the semester. Uh, so which means between PR3 and oral presentation, you have almost two months. Now, in my notes, what I said was for oral presentation, let me copy my notes here. Uh, basically, what I said is that you take your oral, your PR3 and you convert into uh, the slides. Well, actually, there's something very significant before that, which is update. So you have to remember that. Uh, yeah, we are here. You have to remember that between uh, between PR three and oral presentation, there's two months of work. So we would want actually some lecturers and some examiners. What they do is that they bring PR three with them to the oral presentation only to see progress. So basically, update PR3 basically after yeah after three or two months of progress. So some examiners what they do is that they bring PR3 with them to the presentation, and then they compare what they see in PR3 to to your to your presentation uh, in uh, in for the oral presentation, and they then they look at your work and say, oh, this is what happens after two months. And if there is no significant progress, then therefore you are not serious about the FYP. So then, regardless of what you present on, on the oral presentation, then you might have a negative impact. So once again, update your PR3. What does that mean, update? So hopefully, from the time that you finish your PR3 until now, you have definitely completed a methodology. Is that right? <clears throat> methodology. There is no more. Uh, uh, questions here. If you don't finish your methodology at this point in time, you might as well prepare for next semester to repeat FYP2. Then you must also have, uh, must have 
at the very least, yeah, 50% uh, to 75% of your results. To 75%, meaning you have almost finished your results. Remember that the auto presentation happened already at the end of FIP2, like the final, the last week or the last two weeks of the semester. So at this point, we want to see that you have completed already at this stage 80% or 75% of your project, the whole thing okay, of your project. But what you have, what you have left is just finalization of the report, and, you know, writing the conclusions, maybe a couple of tests here and there, and then submit the thesis. But we don't want to see at this stage of time when you're doing auto presentation. That, oh, yeah, I'm still uh, thinking about my method, or no, I'm still haven't tested anything yet. That is not uh, a good thing to hear at, at that stage. In the time, okay, and then once you have uh, these two done, that's what I mean by you know, update PR three. Then you can then take your um, PR three, convert it to slides. Uh, by the way, when I say update, I mean update in writing, basically as if you're writing your thesis in writing meaning complete really the writing, as if you're writing PR4. And then once you're done with it, and then you convert it to slides, and then present slides, okay? Oral presentation two is very similar to oral presentation one. It, the only difference now is that you're gonna focus on your findings and your results. Um, even though, if they are, of course, if they are complete, then no problem, fantastic. If they are not complete, then you have to show us what you have so far, and why have you not completed. Is that clear? Any questions about the oral presentation? Two. Okay, no questions. Any questions about PR3 or anything that I discussed earlier? No, sir. Okay, so if that's no, no more questions, then I guess we are done for today. Uh, and assalamu alaikum and have a good day, everyone. And uh, if you have any questions about your individual project, uh, problems, etc., please do message me and we'll take it from there. Okay? Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day and I'll see you. Uh, Thank you so much, sir. Have a good day, sir. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're all welcome. Thank you.